We're going to start. Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Painting Through Modern Masters, round two, session one. Um, so last, whenever that was in the spring time, we did Painting Through Modern Masters, and we looked at Cezanne for four weeks, and then we looked at Giacometti for four weeks. And this round, we're going to take four weeks and look at cubism, particularly analytic cubism through Picasso and Brock, what they were doing, what's their project, what's, what's going on. And after that, of four weeks of that, we're going to look at Soutine. And I will be demonstrating, we'll look at different images by Brock and Picasso or Soutine, and I'll be demonstrating my understanding through drawings and paintings. And then you're all welcome to do these exercises if you, if, if you can manage it alongside if you want. If not, during the week, that's great. And then you can post it on the Facebook members only page. Uh, if you're not already a member, just uh, request and then I approve and then you can post. It. It's the Painting Project Group, I believe, is the name of the, of the group page. Um, if you would prefer not painting, uh, not posting on Facebook, that's fine. You're welcome just to send me JPEGs of your images. That's fine, or 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 none of it. That's okay too. However, it works for you is really okay. You have a link, right, on Facebook in the in the course description. Yes, and I'll keep sending it out in the email. Okay, good. And then all of the sessions get recorded, and I will be. Uh, it'll take me two or three days, and I'll edit and upload and send you all the link. And then you will have access in perpetuity of these recordings, so you can always go back to them if you like. Um, I think that's it. Um, let's see. I think that's that's basically it. If you have questions, you're you're welcome to uh, type in in the chat box, and I'll be checking that periodically, or you can unmute and ask me. Um, If there's ambient noise in your space, it's helpful to have mute just for everybody, you know, if you don't have a particular question. I think that's sort of it. Okay. I don't want to talk with this candy in my mouth. There. Better. So, what I'd like to, we're going to start by looking at analytic cubism. And try to grapple with like, so what were these guys doing? You know, what's their game, right? The whole kind of uh, larger context of painting through modern masters, as I understand it, is to uh, take a look at all these different master painters of modern times and try to understand what they're doing, what's, what are their inventions, what are their interests, how are they working formally, and through that investigation, find for myself as a painter, well, what am I interested in and what, what way would I like to, to play and paint and, you know, it's like, oh, that's interesting and that's interesting, but that, that's a little weird to me. I don't know. You know, it's like, so you've kind of like, oh, who, wh where do I gravitate to? What, what stream in modernity, you know, is, is the richest for me? Uh, or, you know, cobble it together for yourself. So that's how I understand painting through modern masters. And so it's, you know, we want to, we want to explore what were these guys doing? Um, uh, but the context really is in relation to our own work, finding, you know, where do I resonate? What's interesting for me? And, you know, it may be that something that, you know, I didn't think I'd be interested in that, but that's really kind of interesting, you know, I didn't. And that happens still for me. It's like, you know, painters that, uh, no, not so interesting. And then time goes by and it's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't really think about that, kind of cool. 
So what I'd like to do now, we're going to do some, I'll, I'll, I'll do some screen sharing and we'll look at some images of Cubist work and um, I'll try to uh, contextualize it and look at some of the pieces that we'll be playing with, okay? Um, so, here we go. Screen share, share screen. Um, yeah, you know, I prepped the image and then it just doesn't come up. Oh, here, this one. All right, so let's go to this. And now, we're just seeing that first one. Go to this one. Okay. You all see that? The Still Life by Brock? No. No? Yes. Yes. I, yes. 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 Good. Okay. So here we're seeing, you know, I don't know, we got a violin, we got a picture, we got a table, we got this crazy still life that's in vertical format and in these, you know, angles and these lines and these grays, these light grays, warm grays, cool grays, darks, ochres, right? Real kind of craziness. And uh, this is, here is this, 1910. So this is 1910. Uh, both Brock and Picasso, they're young men. Brock is a bit older. Uh, and Cezanne has just died, I think, four years earlier. So I want to go, let's go back to Cezanne. I'm going to, I'm going to flip back. We're going to go do, 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 do a bunch of these. Come on. Oh, here we go. Okay. So this is a black and white reproduction of a landscape. And you, you, Cezanne is working from perception. Uh, Brock and Picasso are not working from perception. They are working from invention, memory. They are creating an alternate universe. Cezanne is trying to come to terms with his actual perception of this world. And we can see here the way he's trying to figure out the slippage of the sky and the leaves. Maybe it's, it's a windy day. We have this, these linear components of the branches, and we have these, this shifting of light and dark. And it's not only a shifting of lights and darks, it's a shifting of what's positive space, what's negative space. What is form, what is empty, what is air, what is tree. And everything keep, is kind of slipping back and forth as he's trying to figure this out, come to terms with it that's going to play into the way uh, into cubis construction let's look at another one here the way we are looking at the composition this kind of angular way of getting the situation into this rectangle that's going to play into uh the cubis construction Here we see a, a landscape seen by Cezanne and this, this incredible shimmering of, you know, he's just trying to deal with his experience here. But again, this, this flipping of form and space, these boulders, the edges of things. Here, this, this kind of, let's see if I can get a nice detail here. The way the edges kind of come and go. That plays a big part in, in the cubist construction. Here's a, an interior uh, and still life that he set up for himself. And it's just, you know, this crazy ass, painting when you you know we've got this this putti in the in the center and we're looking down on the floor and these angles and the way the space is is so kind of like a like a like a crazy billiards game the way the eye bounces around 
the 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 floor ostensibly you know it's ostensibly a solid floor but it, 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 it everything is kind of uh kind of uh, dematerialized here okay so here we have uh an early uh cubist painting i believe this is picasso although quite frankly i don't have the notes in front of me and i I don't always know. It's not clear. Sometimes they get, they're so close. Uh, and there's a real, so these guys, Picasso and Brock are like two young hotshots and they're smart and they are uh, ambitious and uh, they come of age when the art world has changed. And as they are developing into painters, it's clear that what is important is now innovation, not painting according to the tradition, but figuring out some way of, of uh, advancing what's happening culturally. And they are really the first people since before the Renaissance to uh, overtly uh, create an alternate universe. You know, before the Renaissance, we have these, you know, supernal worlds, you know, heavenly worlds, and we, you know, uh, little, little prophets, you know, and giant babies and, you know, all kinds of, you know, mix and match kind of deal. Uh, things are in gold and it's just a, another world. And, and the Cubists move into that. And we can see, you know, if we're familiar with some of uh, what, uh, this, is, this is Brock and, from Lestock. And he's taking uh, ways that Cezanne was simplifying and using it. And clearly coming up with his own construction. But, you know, look at the way he's, he's bringing all of, you know, these, these movements in and, 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 and relating to the rectangle. Think of that uh, interior we saw with the, with the Putti statue in the center or the, the boy with the curtain and that, you know, cropped chair. Not to mention the way uh, Cezanne, uh, you know, simplifies all those buildings when we look at, at down at Marseille, I believe it is. Bay of Marseille. This is a Picasso. So they're, they're moving into this simplification and uh, construction. And they keep on upping the ante in terms of complexity. So, you know, uh, gosh, uh, what's going on there? Uh, you know, this is, I think this is a solid four, but oh, this is an empty, no, this is a, what is, is this empty or solid? What am I looking at? And, uh, you know, this is, I guess that is a tablecloth. I, uh, is that the side of the table? Maybe that's the side of the table. What exactly? And, it's a still life. I can see that, and this is fruit in a bowl. But like, wait a second, is this empty? Is that? Oh, it's got to be full, but it kind of looks empty. I mean, this looks. No, wait a second. So they're starting to really play with flipping positive and negative. What's solid? What's empty? Whoop. Go back. So here is another one. And we start, you know, okay, landscape and some kind of austere, you know, bear uh, village scene against mountains. And, uh, but things are trippy. Like, what the heck is that? Oh, it's a rooftop. I'm looking down. Oh, wait a minute. That kind of looks like the corner of a, a kind of end. What am I seeing here? And things start slipping and the use of light we're not interested here in 
in light, like um, chiaroscuro or even Monet and trying to get some kind of consistent light uh, direction, nothing like that. We're using value, lights and darks and warms and cools and hard edges and soft edges to play with spatial construction, to play with an, uh, an interaction of form and space. And it's play. They want to see what, what can we do with this? You know, like, like this. This, this uh, dark little indentation, you know, a little niche, is that, am I looking at like an empty space in there, like underneath these browns? Or, wait a minute, is that a roof? Wait a second, what's going on here? Is this an empty space in between two buildings? Or is that a solid form? Things start getting trippy. This is lower than this. I mean, it's just all kind of right. So they're not trying to create some kind of um, logical construction, you know, like, okay, here's a map for the engineers and the architects, and we're going to go build this thing. You can't build that. How are you going to build that? How does that even work? It's they're playing in a very sophisticated way and this has never been done before like this this is like extremely radical here's another i think also a brock and the, you know think of that forest scene uh that we saw by saison and you know here this you know these the shimmering and Again, this kind of crazy construction. So, so they're working from experience, memory, and invention, but not, not perception, like in the moment perception. That's not, that's not the part of the deal for them. So here's another Brock, and it's a, a still life. And you know, like, wow, what the heck? Getting more and more complex. Uh, oh, is that a guitar? Oh, wow. So that's a guitar? And that's the, the arm of the guitar, or the, Maybe it's a mandola or whatever the heck. I don't know. What am I looking at? And it kind of looks like a bowl. You know, is that a, is that a, no, that's the guitar. I'm looking at the side of it there, I guess. Oh, wow. So that whole, you know, notion of looking at form from different viewpoints and vantage points, although I don't think that's their, like a real program. They're just another, it's just another way to play with the construction of form and space. And they, they get right up against non-representational imagery. You know, that you would just, it would just be play without any reference handle. And then they throw in something like, oh, that's a guitar, or oh, that's a candlestick, or oh, that's a bottle, or whatever, just to give us a way of like, Oh, it's a still life, but really they're just trying to figure out, you know, like, gosh, what can we do with this stuff? These are books, I guess, here, look, got some books, you know, wow. So we've got hard edges, we've got sort of these soft transitions, we have darks, we have lights. We have whoop, come here, you. We have um, this kind of uh, what do I call it? It's almost pixelated, you know. These like dashes, and you know, and you can 
see that sort of thing in Cezanne's work, although they're doing it to a different kind of effect, kind of, kind of uh, uh, mosaic, you know, uh, patterning as kind of uh, percussive almost. So there's all these different, there's darks, there's lights, there's warms, there's cools. It looks like, it looks like maybe we've got four colors here. We've got black, white, a brown, and an ochre. And, you know, wow, what happens here? Just kind of, oh. so they're overlap. Hard edge, soft edge. Is this, you know, this the way the niche, the dark niche, kind of embeds into a form, you see, and goes under and in, and then the lighter angle coming over. So there's an overlap, and that's reading on top of this, and this is reading into and under this, and this kind of like some kind of crease and he's just tripping out and then you have all you know this oh that's a picture maybe is that a what am i looking at i don't know table maybe this is a newspaper i don't know so we've got some kind of tabletop and a space beyond it and this whole vertical thing going on and the way the eye is playing through and moving the way, you know, bouncing around. Here's another Brock. God, look at that whole thing just shimmer. It's like, you know, this whole experience of the flux that we, that we get with Cezanne, and now we're getting it in this, you know, kind of different, different way, but it's coming out of that experience. Taking the form that we're familiar with. So we all know this, and then we break it, start to break it apart, not just like uh, flatly, but we're breaking it apart spatially. It's like, whoa, what the heck? Again, through, through these angles, lines, darks, lights, warms, cools, hard edges, soft edges, and the whole thing taking place in this rectangle, the way we're coming to the sides, four sides of the rectangle, structuring in an ongoing way. Right. This, the way Cezanne would would arrive at his composition compositional structure was part of the play. He didn't. He knew it was going to be a table, and he knew there was going to be that chair, probably, and whatever you know, the curtain or whatever the drapery. But how the eye was going to move through, and how he was going to structure in relation to the rectangle. He didn't know, he found that, just like he was finding his perception. And these guys are doing the same thing. They're finding their, their compositional structure as they go. Yeah, look at this craziness. This, wow, that's a great painting. There's a green in there, right? We got some green, kind of daring. <laughs> This is another block. I don't know. So we were looking at this one in the beginning, right? We've got that violin, we've got a pitcher, we've got this table, we've got, you know, they're giving us like like little, you know, like little uh, clues, cues, visual, you know, little little bits to hang our head on as we try to make sense of what the heck is going on. But you know, this, you know, this, this whole thing here, that's really what's going on. The way he's constructing and deconstructing and reconstructing the interplay of form and space. 
Holy Toledo. So this is a Picasso, and it's a drawing, you know, and it's a doodle. I mean, it's, it's a very amazing doodle. I mean, but he's playing, right? He's just sitting down, he's, and he's, you know, he's, he, he knows the figure so well, and he's um, playing with these elements, angles, lines, dark niches, soft transition, hard transition, you know, and, uh, and as he's kind of playing and it's like, oh, here, there's kind of a person and throw it in, but try to throw things in obliquely and kind of indirectly arrive at a human form. But it's, it's how, how to play with all of this, you know, the way he's, he's punning here with the, rear and here the genitalia and you know just the form the geo the geometry the stomach the breast is the head and it's crazy another one So one thing I would highly recommend is during the week uh, in terms of exercises is for one thing, take, take a, a cubist, uh, analytic cubist uh, painting and lay down a, um, here, let me, let's get out of this, stop share, share stop share, share stop. Uh, stop share. Come back. Hi. Um, so one thing I would suggest is take, find a reproduction. It could be online, print it out, or look on your computer, or a book, an analytic cubist painting, and be rigorous about the portion of the rectangle. You know, whether it's, you know, like a four by five proportion or uh, three by seven or whatever it might be. So you have, you have a, a parallel rectangle and start to analyze. You know, you can just, just sit down with a pencil and an eraser and what, what are these guys doing? Just to see how, how are they constructing? And um, it's incredible. Uh, smarties and um or you could do you know find a drawing and copy that but just and you don't have to do the whole thing just start to but when you do it really try to do it um attentively to try to see how are they constructing in such a way to get this ambiguity of uh form and space we were uh, class was it the abstract the abstraction figure is source I don't know if anyone in this group is, was, was, was with us for that but we were looking at uh, Mondrian and his apple trees and the way he is playing with the spaces in between the branches and the branches and the way that that kind of flux that was going on and the way that activated the space. Okay. Um, before I move into um, a demo, uh, are there any questions about what we've been talking about until now? Feel free to unmute if you have any, any questions or comments. I have one, Jordan. It's <laughs> Leslie. Leslie, hi. Does, does the term analytic cubism, would that apply across the, uh, their careers? Like, you know, I've looked at a lot of the paintings of the big still lifes that Brock and yeah, that's and later. Also did. Would that apply I, to those? No. no. Although it certainly is affecting how he got there, of course. But 
Cubism has two basic stages. I mean, there's early, but then you move into this real complex stuff that we're looking at now, analytic cubism. And then they transition into what's referred to as synthetic cubism, which is larger, flatter, sh bigger shapes. Like if we think of like the three musicians, right. by Picasso, I I'll pull stuff up maybe for next time. Uh, the collaging that they did. So these what large, about those big, elaborate still lifes that they they both did. So those. that that really comes after. I mean, it's it, he certainly Brock is certainly following up on implications in that were developed in Cubism, and he's using it. So I guess you would still refer to that stuff as Cubist. I suppose so. It's just art historically. I don't know, actually. Okay. Those, those but it's things. later. I mean, I think those are like the 40s and the 50s. This is all like pre-World War I. Okay. Okay, great. Nice. Yeah. So I have a question about relating the, the rectangle. Could you explain a little bit? Sure. Um, let, me all, let me go back to a share, but before I do that. So as they're with Cezanne, Cezanne's work, he's, involved in his in the moment perception, trying to understand what am I seeing? And he's allowing his experience to override his knowledge. That is, I have an idea of what it's supposed to look like, but I'm really focused on what I'm seeing right now. And he arrives at crazy stuff. But at the same time, he's structuring that investigation to the four sides of the rectangle. So every composition is in relation to the four sides of a rectangle. Uh, and some of those compositions are really clearly determined beforehand. It's, they, they plan it out, you know, look at a Raphael or look at a Poussin painting or, or Edward Hopper. Things are known and then they go and they paint. Cezanne wanted to arrive at that kind of solid compositional structure in that rectangle, classical structure like a Poussin. But he wanted to get there through the improvisational, in the moment, uh, on the fly investigation of an impressionist painting. So he doesn't know what kind of structure he's going to arrive at, at the, by the end in relation to the rectangle. Um, if you go to on my website, there is a section called Recorded Webinars. And uh, if you go to the, the painting through Modern Masters on Cezanne, there are four sessions. The first one, I think, it's, it's, it should be available for free. If it's, if it's, and there's, you just go through and it'll give you, the, give you access. Uh, if it's not, let me know, but it should be. So that first one, you should just, and, and I talk about it, how he's relating to, the, to composition there. Th that kind of uh, ongoing uh, discovery of structure is happening uh, with the cubists. They're doing that too. And so they're like, you know, just finding as they go, not only the interplay of form and space, what's solid, what's empty, and how it flips, figure ground, but how does all that relate to the four sides of the rectangle and how the eye is moving around in such a way that we keep going? You know, a good composition is going to be structured in that rectangle in such a way that I'm just going to hang out. I mean, this is good. It, we don't leave. We don't fall out of the, of the painting. We come to the side and we come back in.
And even if there's a concentration, like uh, say a Mirandi painting, the location of that concentration of stuff, here it's objects for a Mirandi, where that's placed in relation to those four sides is critical. So that's compositional as well, even if it's not, not the same kind of billiards game, you know, where the, the cue ball is bouncing and coming back in. And when we see that in the sun, we see that in the, in the Cuba stuff too. We go and we bounce back in and we come, right? Is this making sense? Yeah. Cool. Um, other questions before? Okay. So let's see. Can you see? Maybe I'll move this a little bit. So we've got we've got this still life. And really the still life is like I'm not so much drawing the still life as using it to play with, to invent. I mean, I suppose if I was uh more uh masterful i would just do this without looking at a still life but i'm used to looking at stuff and uh you know I, i'm not uh, i don't have the the, the kind of uh, visual uh, inventive uh, mind apparently that picasso and brock had right so uh but i'm gonna i'm gonna play i'm gonna play and we'll see how that goes um and i guess I mean, really, this paper is better for graphite, but maybe I'll just for the sake of for the sake of the the zoom feed, maybe so you could. No, well, yeah, let's try it. I'll do it in charcoal. See what happens. Okay, so we got we got a, we got all the stuff you could see, right? Can you see? Yeah, some of it. Some of it. Let's yeah. see. Um. Is that a little oh, better? Yes. Great. Like that. Cool. Okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm making marks of where things are in relation to this still life, but really what I'm doing is I'm setting up just a play of rhythms here. And I'm also trying to play with thinking about an interaction of form and space. And I'm thinking about the overall rectangle how my marks are moving through all of this. And I'm thinking about um, how they are playing with these kind of dashes and um, uh, So again, it's not like I'm trying to render this. I'm using this to play with empty and full. Right? 
and then just enough, you know, information, you know, to give us this, oh, it's gonna be a bottle up there. But really, I'm just using that as, you know, as a, a convention to, to, to play with some more radical stuff. I'm not sure how radical it is now, but it is for me in any case, because I don't really know what I'm doing. Thinking about how they, they have these wedges, you know, they, they, they put these wedges in that make these kind of like um, spaces. And forms don't close, right? They don't have whole intact separate forms. Part of it might be enclosed and then it opens into the background and the background slips into the form and the form disappears and things are just form and space keeps slipping. That's why take a look and unpack and, and draw and oh that's solid. No that's empty. Wait a second. What am I looking at? Jordan, would you say that last thing again? You said forms don't close. Then you said form and space. What came after that? Are slipping. Are slipping. Out. Thank you. Start, you know, take us, take a still life and start to draw and analyze. What are they doing? And something that's gonna feel like it's a solid form, all of a sudden, it's like, wait a second, it, as you move along, it kind of empties into the Disappear, it like evaporates into space. Or something that's spatial all of a sudden seems to get solid and concrete. So they're, so hard edge, soft edge, dark, light, warm, cool. And uh, yeah, there's all this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So Jordan, lots of opposites. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Opposition that's, that's, even. Taking formal opposites and playing with them. They're, um, I would say they are taking, in, in, a, in a very basic way, they're taking solid form, empty space and playing with solid form and empty space. And what can we do with this? And they're doing that and they're playing through line, straight line, curvy line, hard edge, soft edge, dark, light. These, this, this, um, I'm not sure a good way to describe it. This, um, oh, I'll get a good word. There is a good word. 
oh, what's that term? When you have these, these tiles, what's that called? Dang, were they? Tessellated? Yes! Who said that? Dan. Who? Dan. Dan, thank you, Dan. Yeah. Tessellated, it's a great word. They do this tessellation as a way of moving and transitioning with this kind of unit of the brush mark, like Cezanne. And they go from like dark to light and things are, you know, right? And they have the warm and the cool. And the warm is gonna be the browns and the ochres and the cools are gonna be the black. You know, I don't know where white is. And they're playing. I mean, that's what they're doing. They are like, wow, what can we do with this stuff? I'm so glad you thought of that word. <laughs> that was good. Thank you. So you can see the way I'm playing, right? If this was a regular in studio, I'd say, okay, now everybody go, go do this. Where are we? Oh, we got some time. Uh, you know, it's hard for me to. How do you yeah. remember what's what? I you don't. <laughs> okay. I, I do. I do, but things aren't in, in proportional place. Things are definitely out of whack. I am not, I'm just, you know, like, um, and I, I'll move them if I have to, but I'm just, you know, uh, oh look, it's my stool back there. Can you guys see the stool back there? I'm using it, I need my bottle. Uh, Jordan, I just looked up tessellated because it was not a word that I was familiar with. Yeah. They're saying here that there are three types of tessellations. Trans okay. Translation, which is a tessellation which the shape repeats by moving or sliding. That's right. Rotation, a tessellation which the shape repeats by rotating or turning. Great. And reflection, a tessellation, which is the shape repeats by reflecting or flipping. And it also says that circles cannot be tessellated because they cannot have uh, the gaps. Okay. Just for the, maybe the rest of you all knew what tessellation, I didn't. So I don't really, I mean, a new I'm, word, I'll, new word for the day. I'm like taking a, taking a unit and repeating it okay. that's how i was thinking of it like a mosaic like okay. a, how, I, how would how would that differ from perseveration or what what separation i don't know what's perseveration well it's a psych psychological term for people who uh will repeat i'm sorry carrie hi carrie hi um, perseveration, uh, it's, it's kind of based on persevering. Okay. In psychological terms, it's people who do things repeatedly, you know, like they'll tie their shoe and then they'll untie their shoe and they'll tie it again. So from a psychological I, standpoint. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's a fascinating question. It's a, it's a visual formal, in this sense, we're talking about literally making a mark repeatedly as the unit of construction mm -hmm. psychologically that's a that would be a fascinating thing to explore the relationship of that to a psychological state of mind but i'm just thinking of it coming out of Cezanne and cubism as a way of constructing form and space and transitioning between things and building the experience you know it seemed like Cezanne was investigating his perception and building that investigation out of, not all the time, but a lot of the time, building it out of these little hatch marks. Mm -hmm. And the Cubists are taking that in their own direction. Mm -hmm. But yeah, good, all interesting things. I took a, cla I took a class with Trine Buhelm uh, a few years ago. And, oh. huh? you know Trine, I'm sure. Ah. Um, 
and I was was I was just trying to get out of representational painting into abstract painting. Uh -huh. And so I had done this painting with palette knife, very, very sharp angles, etc. And I decided, okay, this was kind of interesting. So I would do it. And each week I did another version of it in a different color, uh, you know, compliments, uh, analogous, you know, that sort of thing. And there was a, psycho there was a psychologist, a uh, retired psychologist in the class. And that's where I learned the word perseveration. And that's the title of the painting because <laughs> I put all four paintings together and yeah, because I kept doing the same thing over and over and over with variations and color. Yeah, cool. So, you know, you can see uh, the game uh, gets more complicated as we go. You know, it's like start making moves in relation to other moves and It's like tossing around an image and making a salad out of it. <laughs> now, Jordan, is there any consciousness uh, about the fact that you've got some straight angular stuff and some curly stuff? Sure. Is, 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 is that... Is that being dictated by your subject, by your still life, or by your mind? Both. Okay. I'm, I mean, it's an interweaving of both of those things as I work. Um, but I'm also trying to, you know, play in the terms that, how I understand what they're doing. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to create a drawing that is going to feel in some in its construction. Uh, I'm trying to play with their terms of constructing. So I'm, you know, the, right. We've got these curves and we've got the straight lines, and I'm looking to, you know, to to see, you know. But it's not an abstraction in that you want it, even though you're deconstructing it. It's still taking on a form like a cup or a mandolin or correct it, it's not so when we talk when we use the term abstraction you know it's not always clear are we talking about non objective imagery where it's like i have no idea what i'm looking at like a jackson pollock or are we talking about i'm taking known imagery known stuff and abstracting into a new image. So what the cubists are doing is clearly it's abstracting from a still life or a uh, or a, a landscape or a figure. They're taking it and taking aspects out and rearranging and reconstructing. They're abstracting. Okay. Right. Yeah. So it's not clear when we use the word abstraction. Often people think non-representational, it's not going to reference anything known. But that's only one particular way of working. And truth to tell, everything is referencing something known in one way or another. Jackson Pollock is too. It's, you know, it's something cosmic or oceanic or Rothko, sunset, you know, de Kooning figures. So, you know, and a realist painting is hugely abstract. How else can it be made? It's a flat thing. So, uh, you know, language is slippery. Um, but yes, I'm talking about abstraction in the sense of taking uh, this stuff and playing with it in a, in, a, in, a, in a newly invented way. But of course here I'm trying to invent according to the terms uh, that I understand of, of those cubist, that cubist work. Uh, Jordan, it's Leslie. Yeah. So, so I'm familiar with like abstracting, you're looking at something, but you're abstracting from it, for example, by let's reduce it to shapes. Yeah. Or whatever. I'm not sure with this, 
this brand of <laughs> abstraction, I guess what I'm hearing, but I don't know if I'm right is okay. You're going to look, you're going to use shapes and, but you're going to leave your forms open or, or you're going to present the, the spaces in such a way that they could be mistaken for form. You're, you're oh, putting the stuff together so like that space. everything's ambiguous. Somehow. Yes. Yes. What is form and what is space? You want to deliberately make am ambiguous in the sense of they're going to slip back and forth. Okay. So that what you construct now, you want to, you are deliberately playing with figure and ground relationships, form and space. Okay. And you want to take something that you're reading as form and see if you could get it to actually also read as space and then it's going to slip over here and yeah. Okay. So you're, we're using the known world objects and still life and the spaces in between and we're using it to create a new image that is an exploration of a game a slippage of form and space okay i this is new to me so yeah <laughs> it should be interesting <laughs> oh yeah and what what's interesting also is this game was done in in like you know the first decade of the 20th century like over a hundred years ago and it's still like it's radical when you try to play it it's like yeah. How is this? <laughs> and what are they doing and particularly for us as makers because we're so um wedded to this is form and this is space and i'm trying to get this to be form and this to be space but I, what i'm trying to actually get them to slip back and forth yeah <laughs> and i'm just constructing you know like okay i can think of making an abstract painting where i get to mess around and play but i'm actually constructing Whoa, how's that work? So there's something very, um, cubism as a template for painterly construction. It's huge. It's like, whoa, because so much that happens in the 20th century, could it have happened? Would we have, ha I don't know if we'd have de Kooning without cubism, right? So how does it, oh goodness just so this model of constructing a world and playing thank cool. you yeah uh we're just about there are there are there other questions for uh for the exercise I, I I was, to, uh, what yes. about what you're doing now yes could you show like where is stuff that is inside that turned to be outside or is it still murky? Well, it's not clear to me what's form and space here. I mean, I know that that's this white uh, sugar bowl, but you know, I mean, I, I could, uh, this sort of turns into kind of a niche. And that started starts to get a little more positive, but then it gets negative space and as underneath here. So this feels like it might be the shadow of a form, but then it becomes like underneath something and kind of like a like an armpit. So <laughs> I think, you know, it's not clear what's where, but I get the sense of something, you know, coming under and over and It starts to feel sort of spatial, but I'm not sure what the heck I'm looking at. Could, uh, could you finish this and put it on uh, the Facebook thing so we could see where yeah, it's going? I don't know if I can finish it, but I can, I, I'll try to keep working on it. I, I'm gonna, what I will do is, um, yeah, I'll, 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 I should have some time to work on it. I, I don't know where it would go. I don't know what it would look like. I don't know what it would take for me to whatever finish means. I'll, I'll keep playing with it. Um, okay. 
you know, surprise us. What's that? Surprise us. Surprise me. <laughs> I have no idea. So, Jordan, I'd yeah. like to ask again how to access the website. Well, the link is on the email. Oh, okay. Through, there's a link there. Just go to go to that, and then you'll have to ask to be a member, and I'll just approve it, and that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're talking about be sending uh, Facebook now? What? Are you going to be sending links for every week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in a few days, I'll be sending it out. It'll take me a few days to to take the recording and edit it and upload it, and then I'll send out a link. So by okay. the week. Okay. When you said go to the website, were you talking about Facebook to mm -hmm. get yeah. permission? Yeah. And, yeah, and Jack, that's about the Facebook project group. That's right. Okay. 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 Yep. Yep. <laughs> that was a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. It's cubism is dense. That's the game. So, again, I really recommend even before you you try the this exercise, take a cubist reproduction sit down with a cup of coffee or a glass of wine and try to just rigorously this line this line this dark this light oh, this gets lighter how does this transition and just start to understand how are they putting it together okay great okay everybody nice uh starting nice. up with and I look forward to being in touch and see you all next week. Great. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.